You are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. The interview starts now. Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist for the joy formidable, Ridian David. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you, Raul? <laughs> <laughs> we, we both can trill our R's, which is ex- exceptional, and everybody's going to go, what's that about? But it, we know. We'd we like know. to always start from the beginning, having a look at your musical journey. How did you get started in music and on bass? I uh, got super obsessed with Hendrix as a very young uh, teenager, and that was a complete kind of gateway into discovering all the great music out there you know and i had a, a real thing for him specifically but then after that like i say it was like wow what's all this stuff that's out there that i had been missing you know i was um i grew up just listening to what was kind of going on in our household and of course that, that that's a certain lens i i um i got opened up to all the you know a much wider spectrum that was out there and, and you know, thankfully so. Um, so that was in my early teens. I was a very sporty person uh, before then, but I got, you know, really obsessed uh, with their music. I'd had, like, uh, piano lessons growing up, but frankly, at the time, I wasn't interested, you know. I think discovering the music that I was into and, of course, in your early teens where you're kind of going out and going to see, there was um, bands coming through our area in North Wales, and there was this one place specifically called the Tivoli that... We were able to see bands playing every week, and there wasn't much else other than that, really. So that, it was uh, just a big deal, you know. So yeah, I just got I got really deep into listening to all kinds of bands and artists, and I started off on guitar, actually, um, not on bass, you know. But I'm interest interested more than anything, I think, with songs, you know. And so I've always dabbled in lots of different instruments, and eventually it took me to. Uh, bass just for this band. Me and Ritzy had done some work before where I was a guitarist and lead singer. Throughout school, I didn't particularly do music officially until I really dug into the guitar playing and and knew that I wanted to do something with music. So I, I knew I, I wanted to study it like in university or around that time anyway, somehow. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so I, did, I got a few things off my, uh, such as grades and so forth, off my own back to be able to go and do a course. So I went to Wolverhampton to do a year of popular music and art there, kind of a combined course, but then I left to go to Salford to do popular music for a couple of years in uh, Manchester. And courses and music, sometimes they're a tricky one, but I, I was glad that I went to Manchester because there's, you know, so much great music going on there. There was at the time and there is now, you know. So I was forming my own band um, and, uh, of course, uh, you go through many, many players trying to find the right kind of outfit and chemistry and (laughs) finding yourself and what's the voice and, you know, spent years doing that, really. And, uh, yeah, been in a few different bands, eventually settled with uh, meeting Ritzy. She was in America at the time and uh, I had a different band. She came to join me and my band playing guitar and for... For whatever reason, that didn't work out. It got pretty messy, actually. But things sometimes in, in music do, and personalities, you know. So we escaped back to North Wales, where we we're originally from. And this is, uh, I think, about 10 years ago now. That was the start of this group, The Joy Formidable. It was mm-hmm. me and Ritzy tinkering in our home studio, getting a bunch of demos together, and finally wanting to take that out in a live sense. And on the road, we found a drummer in London, and we moved down there. Yeah, and that's, you know... That's the start of this band, anyway. There's a whole history after that as well. Gotcha. <laughs> well, it's it's very interesting. Again, the Joy Formidable is a trio, and you guys you're kind of hitting genre. There's when I when I read about you, they they have kind of alternative rock, indie rock, but they 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 pick a, a variety of kind of genres for you to fit in. So you're very mm-hmm. fluid that way, and it's an interesting choice especially when you only have three musicians, for one of them to be on bass. Because so many times you would see a guitarist and drums and vocals. Do you find that as as the bassist, you're kind of doing double duty where you might be, are, are you playing, because you've got to have more melodic 
support of the music as a guitarist might, but you've got that more percussive element where you tie in with the drummer. That's it, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely been a fair amount of kind of exploration in that. Um, Richie's on guitar, I'm on bass, Matt on drums. And yeah, I'm going back and forth between low and high quite a lot. There's, of course, different ways of filling that space, if you like. And mm-hmm. there's also allowing the space to actually be there. That That's what I enjoy about um, three pieces as well, you know. It just completely depends on the song. But we, yeah, we've definitely enjoyed messing around w- with that space, you know, and how you do that. It's not just through pitch it might be you know tombra all kinds of things you know? recently you guys have a, a new release it was just late september uh titled arth it's got three a's and <laughs> spelling has always been a challenge for me this is this makes it and it means bear in welsh from what i understand tell us a little bit about this yeah. project i think we we view this album as as the band kind of really uh, having fun with guitars especially letting the inhibitions go and kind of a rediscovering of ourselves you know with the last record it was very you know we've been proud of everything that we've released but it was very heavy a very heavy time and it's quite a dense record and i think we were going through some things as well within the business that was really you know we had some issues with and I won't go into it too much but there was some financial problems and all kinds of stuff and you know we just kind of like after doing it for you know this is like 10 years and stuff now you know it was we were sick of a few things but um yeah we kind of got Ritzy's based in Utah we kind of got lost a little bit and found ourselves again you know it was a transformative experience really and i'm glad we uh, pushed through you know i think it's probably the most experimental album we've done uh, we've always had dense records and multi-layered records even though we are a three-piece we don't mind that when it comes to the recording you know, mm-hmm. we see it as a different discipline but this one was maybe pieced together a bit more and we were happy to do that it was kind of like a patchwork collage effect you know yeah we really enjoyed it, it was like uh, after like i say this little period maybe Maybe of having a block for a second and going, God, you know, this is, there's some things that are really winding me up now. It was like falling in love with the music again and and, and it really coming together. Very colourful. The album cover, uh, cover is very colourful. We felt like it really encapsulated what was going on. Tiny little fleeting moments of layers as opposed to some of the other records that have been multi-layered for the whole song. Yeah, uh, an album of uh, experimentation and fun and, and plenty of energy. We're on the road r- uh, right now. We're in Portland. We're about a week and a half into the US tour around this album and mm-hmm. having a fantastic time. We've just done a couple of dates with the Foo Fighters in between all this and, and that was fun as well. So yeah, we've got a couple of nights in Portland now and looking forward to it. And it's probably a good point and I, I do want to come back to a couple of things, but if people want to know where you are as far as tour goes, the joyformidable.com is a good place yeah. to look. Yeah, it is, yeah. Perfect. So looping back, I'm glad you mentioned color because both in the album cover but also in your videos, there is a lot of use of additional color. I noticed in, in the patterns, uh, there's, it's kind of got that more visual, artistic, but there are bur- kind of these bursts of color added into the music. There is, especially with this um, record, as I say, yeah, we do view it as a very colorful record. But we've always been heavily involved with the visuals. We feel like it's really important. Music is a language, isn't it? So the creative arts in general, we feel like that, um, for us anyway, all of that coming together to really create this depth of what you are as an artist is really important Mm -hmm. so yeah we we've always enjoyed doing that and being heavily involved in the videos and stuff and i think it's also indicative Uh, musicians and artists in general are kind of the 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 focal point of the temperature of society the kind of the difference is that the artists are the ones that are expressing and putting those feelings and the sentiments and their thoughts out there and the audiences many times can relate to mm-hmm. a particular portion of it. And so there's so many times where we think about a tune or we think about a band and we think about a feeling more than even a particular song. You'll go, oh, yeah, this, this band, I feel happy when I hear them. Or, oh, mm-hmm. this is the band I go to when I'm feeling very blue and I want to... <laughs> <laughs> drown my yeah. sorrows with this tune and mm-hmm. you know it, it's part of that human experience that musicians and again artists 
have that ability to make material and share with other people so that they can relate to it and go, oh, yes, it's a kind of that commonality that, yeah. that we have as people. Moving on to your specific voice, a little bit about gear. Tell us, how are you getting your sound uh, on bass? Live, as I say, I, I view it quite different to the the record. We kind of go all out there with the, the records, and it's a it's an interesting challenge to sometimes, you know, take that into the, the, the live side with mm -hmm. three people. The, the point is the song and whatever that needs, and so I'm kind of swapping bases and gear and software and uh, including analog stuff for like quite a lot when I'm in the studio. But live, I've typically always used Fender Jaguar bases. I do like... Fender um, basses yeah, and some jazz and precision ones as well, but mainly the Jaguar up until now. I just feel like for me, it kind of it's a good all rounder. I will need the warmth as well as the the crispness, and uh, with the pedals I use, it, it just works well. Fender bassmen I've typically used, yeah, I love those uh, amps and camps. Um, pedal wise, it's changed a little bit over the years, but I love the bass tone MOSFET. That's a, a staple distortion I've got. I've got a few different distortions on there, um, like your standard boss, uh, OD3 uh, distortion, Pi. Oh God, there's been a few. There's been the Rat, uh, Sansamp, all sorts. I'm trying to think, what have I got there now? There's a couple of others. A few different, <laughs> a few different distortions. Sure. Wham, whammy pedal, reverb, delay. And while you think, any particular strings? Up until now, I've mainly been using Dodarios, but uh, again, it, it kind of uh, does depend on what you're going for in that particular game, particular song. But yeah, they've worked fine for me. Ernie Balls have been fine for me as well. Usually kind of 52s, 105 to 50, is it? And yeah. Looking ahead, I know you guys have your tour going on right now. What plans do you have for the future? What what are you foreseeing? Oh, God, uh, lots of plans. You know, the, the main thing is getting the uh, touring around this record out there. There's plenty of places still for us to play uh, regarding this record. But um, we have some side projects and solo uh, records coming up. We dabbled in acoustic EP. I mean, we've always done acoustic stuff, but uh, and we did an EP last year, and we did an acoustic tour around that. I really enjoyed that, you know, the, the contrast. So we... Um, We'll probably go and do that again, maybe a, another EP or acoustic album, something more substantial. We want to do a record in Welsh, which is my first language, and Ritzy's second. So yeah, there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot, you know, and the key thing is just to uh, be uh, still excited and stand behind the music, really, and we'll always... Mm, mm, you know, be making records if that is there, and it certainly is there, you know. Well, we, we appreciate you taking time out of your touring schedule and, and making a moment to chat with us. Folks, you've seen him here, Ridian David, coming to you live on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.